Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. How are you this morning, Dr. Paul? I am doing very well. Uh, we're not going to talk about foreign policy today, but we're going to be talking about liberty. Yes. <laughs> you know, there was a major incident this uh, past week. The president got involved, and one of his uh, top aides uh, was involved. And a lot of people chimed in, and that had to do with... Uh, what happened to Sarah Sanders when she went to a restaurant in Lexington, Virginia. And uh, she, she went in and uh, I think they asked her to leave or they kicked her out anyway. It, and the big story was, why? Well, she was a Trump supporter and we don't like Trump supporters and therefore she needs to get out of here. Uh, a bit of discrimination, that doesn't sound right. What about free speech and discrimination? You know, you can't do that. Uh, so she, this, oh, no, obviously, under today's uh, political system, uh, she doesn't have any right to throw her customer out because uh, customers have rights too, you know. You can't discriminate just out of the clear blue. But that, that raises more questions than answers because uh, if you uh, write a law, to correct this, you might be discriminating against the owner <laughs> and telling the owner how to run a restaurant. So, uh, but the, the person, that, another woman that was owning the restaurant is the one that uh, confronted her. And uh, this became a, a bit of a scandal in how do you solve this problem? But it's, um, I think it asks some interesting question because it, it, it introduces the notion of property rights, uh, First Amendment rights, and, uh, and, and, and this is, uh, you know, freedom of speech you know what what, what you can do so um, and the big question why, why is the federal government getting involved in this in this restaurant business so it's uh, you know when there's a problem you know the the chant is let's just get the federal government to write a law yeah. but there are already laws that has made this complex because obviously they look at uh, private property somewhat differently than we do and these kinds of issues are always good for us because we can point out the hypocrisy on all sides and we can also offer the, the corrected libertarian solution, the pro-liberty solution. But, you know, there is a lot of hypocrisy. And Stephanie Wilkinson is the owner of this Red Hand restaurant. Uh, the Sanders and her family, I guess eight people, went in there to have dinner. Uh, the cook had a freak-out attack when he saw her. He called his boss. Oh, you'll never guess who's in here. She comes, I'll come down and check it out. She gets there, oh no, what are we gonna do? She says that she took a vote among her staff, which I've never heard of, of a company doing something like that. Took a vote among her staff, said we gotta kick her out. And um, they got a lot of publicity, bad and good. But you know, this brings to mind something we had just talked about, which is the Masterpiece Cake Shop issue. Uh, and of course, the left was furious about this. How dare you refuse service uh, to this uh, same-sex couple? It's terrible. <laughs> now they're the same one saying, uh, Good for her, she kicked out this horrible monster, you know, and then you have the right wing uh, who's uh, loved the masterpiece and now was furious about this. So it's always a situational thing. See, so they never bear, you know, boil it down to uh, a principle and the principle of private property. Most of the time people could sort this out that if, it's, if we were talking about somebody's house, their private home, you know, if, if somebody comes in, they're invited in, they're a guest, but if they're outlandish in what they're doing and cause a ruckus, you, you can put them out because it's your house and you come in on those terms. But <clears throat> in the last several decades or longer, they've dri driven this line between uh, uh, property, uh, private property and what they call public property. And it's arbitrary. Why, why, uh, why is it if you own this restaurant, that you can't treat it and have the same rules that you have at your house. They have rules all the time. This became an incident because it was having to do with, uh, you know, freedom of expression and who you work with and for, so they wanted to get involved in more. But if this family came in and all of a sudden they pulled out some instruments and started shouting and yelling uh -huh. and dancing around and disturbing everybody in there and nobody would come into the restaurant, of course they have a right. It's their property. So in many ways, what, they, what they're rejecting is the notion that an owner has really a right to discriminate and pick and choose. You know, restaurants a lot of times have dress codes. You're not so, a lot of go into restaurants near beach if you can't wear, you can't come in without a shirt, and you can't, yeah. you can't come in in your in your bare feet. So they, they discriminate all the time. I like to think of this, uh, this the First Amendment is you have to have this really bizarre understanding that 
you know, in a free country, you really have a right to be a jerk <laughs> if you don't hurt people. Yeah, and yeah. the punishment and the regulations come in a, in a different way. So what's the regulation here? She owns the property and she throws this couple, you know, this group out. Well, uh, What's going to happen right now? I don't think there are many Republicans going in her restaurant, and she in Lexington is probably a pretty conservative district. And uh, she, but, but but she addressed that. The owner addressed that and said, "Yeah, but there's sometimes you really have to stand up for principle, and that's why she had to do this. And that is the uh, this driving dislike uh, that uh, that verges on hatred toward Trump. It justifies anything. We we try to balance." out and say uh, when Trump uh, does something that we like, say in Korea, we mention it, but if we don't like what he's doing in Iran, we mention it. But no, this, this, is, this is something that they do and uh, they, they just think that, I, I think that the uh, hatred of Trump drives these people to do things that they wouldn't do. Like in the cake incident, yeah. incident, they don't have a basic principle that they work on. It's arbitrary. Well, under these circumstances, we do this. On those circumstances, we do something else. And we can dislike this woman's philosophy and think that it's really ridiculous and petty to kick someone out because you don't like the person they work for for political reasons. But in a way, you have to admire the fact that she stood up for her property rights and said, this is my restaurant. I don't want to serve you. But the problem is, and I may be wrong, but I bet if you asked her, she probably would support uh, forcing that cake baker to bake the cake for the couple. So it's a situational thing. But, you know, here's a funny thing. As predictable, the Washington Post is trying to come to some conclusion about it. They had an article the other day, did the red hen violate Sarah Huckabee Sanders' rights when it kicked her out? And they had all kinds of human rights lawyers and everyone. But they concluded, no problem. She's powerful, white, and heterosexual, so she can't be discriminated against was their conclusion. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, it came up on the uh, Sunday reports. Uh, Elijah Cummings, a congressman, uh, a very decent person I've known. And, but, but his views on, uh, you know, segregation and, and uh, restaurant management of restaurants yeah. and customers. And I would understand uh, where his position is. It, but he, he touched on, you know, the real reason. He was being more consistent because he understood, he stood with the Republicans and said, say she shouldn't be thrown out. Yeah. And he, he was right from his viewpoint. He at least was consistent. consistent yeah. he, he was consistent in saying, well, you, you can't discriminate. We argue that in private property, discrimination help happens all, all the time. But he, was, uh, he disagreed uh, with uh, Sanders' position, didn't like it, but she, he understood this would challenge this whole mentality that property rights may may apply somewhat to our homes but they certainly don't apply as soon as you deal with the public you no longer own it you yeah. better obey the social uh, decorum and social rules that the federal government is yeah. writing <laughs> yeah that's unfortunate but you know she will suffer the consequences uh, of her action uh, she already is suffering i'm sure she'll probably suffer at the bank but the problem is though the republican backlash now or the pro sanders backlash is almost violent you know they're 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 putting phony bad reviews and they're aggressively hacking her website why not just tell all your friends don't go there you know have a, a decent so you're 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 against a very uncivilized behavior and you're being twice as uncivilized speaking of uncivilized you can't go without mentioning maxine waters here's what she said <laughs> she thinks that's great she said, let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And if you see somebody from that cabinet in a restaurant, department store, at a gas station, you get out there and you create a crowd and you push back on them and you tell them they're not welcome anywhere. Well, I would say her attitude was not quite as gentle as Congressman Cummings. Yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> a, a little bit different. But, you know, it really is down to understanding what the First Amendment is, is all about. Because I mentioned that I think it uh, means you have a right to be a jerk and do dumb things and the market will handle it, you know, as long as you're not hurting people. But you have a right to protect your house and your property, your church, your synagogue, your mosque, all this. You have a right to do this. But think of all the terrible things that happens in some people's houses. Think of what happens when you have uh, intellectual freedom. They conspire for promoting communism yeah. and fascism and all these kind of things, but we still respect uh, freedom, freedom of speech. And uh, the same way on religion, a lot of 
nasty stuff has occurred uh, when it, it morphs over into theocracy and, yeah. and there's the religious element controls the government, but you don't throw everything out. But people can't handle the, this decision making when it comes to commercial. They can maybe with uh, in, in educ you know in, in uh, intellectuals matter, but even that's getting bad. So sometimes what they'll do is the PC people come in. They say, oh well, we still believe in the First Amendment, but what we need to do is just show them that what they're saying is bad. But that gets morphs over to people losing jobs and yeah. all kinds of things that are happening. Yeah. Well, I would just conclude by saying the market is a great thing. It's about human action and how humans behave. Uh, and the market will regulate even, uh, as you say, uh, jerky behavior. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and that is true. You know, most of these problems can be solved with, first, the f for the most part, the federal government need not be involved in this. It wasn't meant to be that. And the second thing is people have to understand what property is, is meant to be. It's supposed to be private. And if you don't endorse that, you can't solve these problems and you're over in the socialist uh, authoritarian uh, uh, camp. So uh, the other thing that must go along with this is volunteer uh, associations, both social and economic. Some people believe it in so in, in uh, religious and uh, and, uh, and uh, intellectually, but not on economics. You can't have any volunteerism there. Everything should be voluntary and nonviolent, and property rights, uh, you know, understood, and and promises and contracts should be respected. You can solve all these problems. Every, all this other nonsense, and Daniel pointed out so well, the left and the right, how they come about. If they would stick to a principle like this, these problems wouldn't even be discussed. They wouldn't appear. But the monstrosity of government intervention that we have now in, in the courts and uh, in social media and with the federal government and all these rules and regulations, then we get to the point where uh, they have this big debate between right and left on what do you do with a problem like this? And then you find out the right has been on both sides and the left has been on both sides. So we suggest take a look at the position of those of us who believe in non-intervention, minding our own business. We can solve a lot of problems with that philosophy. Thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. Please come back.